Huh? He said he's sick. He's going home. So do you mark him off? Oh, I'm going to do it now. Okay. Look at, yeah, Jeffrey. All right. This is what democracy looks like. Thank you all for being here tonight for the budget hearing. Um, our budget hearing processes and our fee tax and fee hearing processes, which will happen on Thursday night, are of course a very important part of this budget process and we're glad that you're part of it too. Um, this is an opportunity, as you all know, for you to react to the manager's proposed budget and share with us, the county board, about what your priorities are. Uh, importantly, and perhaps a little different uh, than most of our board meetings, we won't be saying much tonight. Our job tonight is to hear and listen and to take notes uh, and to process what you're sharing with us. Um, as some of you know, as some of you have been a part, uh, we have work sessions as well. Um, 11 of them in total, one this afternoon, a few more still on the calendar. Those have been opportunities for us to ask questions. And then, of course, we'll have further opportunities to deliberate. But tonight is about hearing your comments and your thoughts. Um, I would encourage anyone who is interested in following this process, even more so than you're already doing by being here tonight, to visit budget.arlingtonva.us, uh, where you can find all of our past work sessions, including video, as well as upcoming work sessions, further details on the budget, and a few more opportunities to engage with us, should you so choose. Uh, we have used um, an, advanced online an advanced online registration system for many years. Um, we hope that you found that convenient. I hope many of you have signed up for an advance. We know many of you have signed up in advance. Um, but individuals who are here, or if they're out in the hallway too, um, can still register to speak out in the hallway up until 8 p.m. this evening. Um, those speakers will be heard after everyone who pre-registered. Uh, a couple of notes about speaking procedures and accessibility. Um, we do have a Spanish language interpreter here. Could I ask you to introduce yourself, please? Uh, good evening. My name is Charlene Varela, and I'm here for Spanish interpretation. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Charlene Varela, y estoy aquí para ayudarles con interpretación en español. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Uh, you'll also see closed captioning scrolling on the screen above me, um, and that 
podium in front of you can be adjusted up or down with the, the up and down arrows. So hopefully we can accommodate whatever your needs may be. Um, as you all know who signed up in advance, uh, you can sign up to speak for two or three minutes. So we'll hear all the two minute speakers first in numerical order, excuse me, yeah, in numerical order, three minute speakers will be called second. And again, if anybody is pre-registered or is registering tonight before 8 p.m., um, they'll be put after all of those speakers. Uh, here's something you can do for everyone in this room. We want to hear from as many folks as possible, and so we encourage you to think um, about whether your testimony might be repetitious. Uh, if you're here with a large group and you know that you want to stand in support of a strong message just maybe two or three times instead of 10 or 20, um, we would encourage or invite you to stand up. Um, some gestures that are helpful uh, that we've found uh, in public comment before, the deaf and Quaker community both use this um, as a sign of support, uh, rather they're a little less disruptive than applause. Um, so if you'd like to associate yourself with prior comments, stand, etc., cetera, um, that might help us move a little more expeditiously and get to everyone before it gets too late. Um, finally, if you are submitting written statements, you can do that at any time. You can hand your testimony to our clerk tonight, or you can email us at countyboard at arlingtonva.us. Um, the last thing to note is that board members may occasionally go to the back to stretch our legs, um, get a cup of coffee. We can hear you and we can see you. We have both audio uh, and visual on the back. So know that even if you can't see us, we are still listening to your comments. So let's get started. Our clerk was going to call our speakers in a set of two. If you could plan to come up when you're waiting for your turn, that'll help us move through more quickly. Um, Madam Clerk. Oh. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you please call for us the first two speakers? The first speaker is Nancy White, followed by Matthew Martin. Hi, good evening. I'm Nancy White, Executive Director for Arlington Free Clinic, and we provide free comprehensive health care to low-income, uninsured Arlington County adults. And we do this all through the generosity of volunteers and donors throughout the community. I want to thank you tonight for your support, which helps us to care for the sickest and poorest residents of our community, of which there are many. It's our privilege to work in collaboration with our colleagues at Arlington County's Department of Human Services, Virginia Hospital Center, and the many partners who make up Arlington Social Safety Net. I'm especially proud of the work that's currently underway, led by Anita Friedman, Director of DHS, to improve and streamline the collaboration with this collaboration with a goal of getting the right clients and patients to the right organizations at the right time for the right treatment, and especially at the right time. I'm, through this work, I'm optimistic that one day I'll no longer hear those horrible words, I wish we could have seen you sooner. Perhaps we could have treated the cancer. Perhaps we could have prevented the amputation. Perhaps we could have saved your life. And I believe I'm optimistic enough, and you have to be in this business, to know that we can solve these problems. Arlington's small enough. We have the resources to be able to work together collectively. Um, Arlington's a better community in so many ways because of our rich diversity. And without all of these critical services, those in need will simply move away. And I don't think any of us want that to happen. Thank you for your time tonight and for your support and for making our community stronger. Thank you. The next speaker is Matthew Martin, followed by Cynthia Hilton. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, county manager. My name is Matt Martin, and I'm the president of the Arlington Police Beneficiary Association one of two employee groups that represent Arlington's police officers. We don't come to many board meetings, but the serious issues facing the police department merit our and your attention. Let me start with the good news. You have a world-class police force made up of college-educated, well-trained, thoughtful women and men who deliver exceptional service and have wide community support. The latest citizen satisfaction survey shows that 85% of Arlingtonians are either satisfied or very satisfied with the services we provide. But your police department is in trouble because we can't recruit and retain the high quality police officers we need. We are currently operating at 48 officers below full strength. New officers are leaving soon after we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to train them, and the department is using thousands of hours of overtime simply to meet minimum staffing requirements. 
We are so understaffed that a restructuring plan is being discussed right now that may cut valued services. Some of the reasons for this are out of your control, but you have complete control over one reason, the fact that Arlington County police officers are seriously and shamefully underpaid. A new college-educated police officer in Arlington, one of the wealthiest communities in the United States, doesn't make enough money to afford the average rent in Arlington, or Falls Church, or Alexandria, or Fairfax County. But you can help stop the exodus of talented officers this fiscal year. The manager has proposed a 2.5% raise for our three lowest ranks. This is not enough to fix the critical problem. Make public safety a priority and increase that raise to at least 4%. We deserve and demand to be paid equal to our value. It's time for you to take care of the people who take care of you. Thanks very much for listening to us. The next speaker is Cynthia Hilton, followed by Jay Corbelis. Members of the Arlington County Board, I am Vice Chair of the Aquatics Committee. I am following up on a statement that you heard from our Chair, Don Hesse, on March 13th, when he presented the Committee's recommendation that the amount of funds transferred from DPR to APS for operations and maintenance of the county's three indoor pools be immediately evaluated to see if an increase is warranted as directed by a joint MOU signed in 2009. Since March 13th, we have inquired about copies of the annual evaluations or evidence of meetings or minutes to ascertain how the MOU directive has been complied with, what criteria are used, and who makes the fund transfer decision. We have yet to see any formal record of this process, and we recommend that standard operating procedures be instituted that will provide transparency and accountability. Our committee has also instituted a survey to solicit public input on the options that would generate the 55,000 in new revenue requested in the APS budget proposal. To date, the survey shows that 60% of respondents, enough to break a Senate filibuster, would want the DPR transfer to be increased as stipulated in the MOU. The APS proposal to raise fees was preferred by only 13%. Finally, the committee sent a letter to you and the school board dated March 22nd, memorializing these recommendations, and we look forward to your response. If this fund transfer is not increased, community fees are expected, or the community users are expected to see fees raised for the fourth time since the MOU was signed. Frankly, the criteria the committee adopted to trigger consideration of fee increase has not been met. In fact, last year was a record breaker for cost recovery from uh, swim fees. Community swimmers pay their fair share. Remember that DPR has never transferred the base amount stipulated in the MOU, despite more than doubling its number of participants and classes. And this year, the proposed transfer is only 70% of that amount. Thank you for your attention. The next speaker is Jay Corbelis, followed by Brian Lynch. Jay Corbelis. Moving to the next speaker, Brian Lynch. My name is Brian Lynch and I'm proud to represent the men and women of the Arlington Professional Firefighters and Paramedics Association. I come before you tonight because your public safety services are facing a crisis. The number of firefighters who have left the department in the past four years equates to 28% of our uniform strength. The result has been a decrease in the experience level of our department and increases in mandatory overtime and lost time injuries. The root of the crisis is that we have not had an adjustment to our wage scale in five years. In that time, the cost of living is up over 6% and our wages have fallen further and further behind the region. The manager, recognizing the crisis, but working within the budget guidance, has proposed a 4% wage increase and more FTEs to reduce our work week four years from now. We truly appreciate it, but 4% is too small when we are 21% behind the region and our competitors are receiving increases. If there truly is no other money, the money for FTEs this year should instead be strategically used to increase our raise to 6% to help retain the firefighters that you have already paid to train. If just one firefighter paramedic is retained, the savings in training costs will more than pay for the increased cost of reducing the work week over the remaining three years. 
We have been told time and time again that this budget will reflect the values of this community. We risk our lives to protect this community. Is permitting our wages to significantly lag inflation, further weakening the services that protect this community, particularly its most vulnerable members, consistent with this community's values? I hope not. Fixing this problem will take years, but we have proposed a stronger first step. The choice of whether to take it is yours. Thank you. The next speaker is Patricia Gabrera Velasquez, followed by Wendy Zinker. Good evening, honorable members of the Arlington County Board, county staff, and ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patricia Cabrera, an Arlington County resident and a former student of the Arlington Education and Employment Program, or RIP. I'm speaking on behalf of my fellow students at RIP on an important matter concerning the RIP program budget. Like many of the foreign-born and immigrant members of the Arlington community, we are grateful because the RIP program has brought important changes to our lives. Learning English has helped us become active members of the community. As parents, we participate in our children's education. As workers, we have gotten better jobs. And as community members, we pay taxes and participate in county programs like Neighborhood College. But now, we are concerned that Arlington County plans to reduce RIP program's budget, specifically in the administrative services sector. We understand that classes and scholarships will not be cut, but without the bilingual and administrative staff to conduct testing and registration, provide information, and manage the scholarship process, the program will not be able to run, and there will be fewer students participating. We appreciate that you have provided information for immigrants on the county website, but for us, face-to-face -face interactions and help are much more important, and that is what we get at RIP. Therefore, we respectfully request that you not cut the program's budget. I am now able to speak up in meetings like this, thanks to your support of the RIP program, past and present. Please do not deny immigrants who badly need your support and assistance. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Wendy Zinker, followed by Pete Scampavia. Good evening. My name is Wendy Zinker, and I am the executive director of Arlington Neighborhood Village. The county manager's proposed 2019 budget includes a recommendation to support ANV's financial aid fund through the housing services programs. Competitive grants are awarded to nonprofit agencies meeting the goals of the county's plan. Specifically for ANV, it's goal two, to promote healthy and self-sufficient families. The proposed grant is for $11,000 to connect more of the county's low-income seniors with services to improve their well-being and connection to the community. ANV was founded in 2013 with the goal of creating a community of neighbors helping neighbors age in place. We know that all older adults want the same thing, to stay in their homes safely and independently for as long as possible. But we also know that the daily challenges of living on your own grow, and seniors need more support to remain safely in their homes. ANV works towards that end. It's a community-based nonprofit supported by membership and driven by a large volunteer core. We provide both direct services, such as help with errands, transportation to doctor's appointments, small household tasks, and daily check-in calls, as well as a strong social network. In less than four years of operation, we've grown to over 215 members, ranging in age from 57 to 97. 10% of our members represent minority backgrounds. 16% uh, of full members receive financial aid. Over 25% of our members and an equal number of our volunteers live in South Arlington. We've recruited and trained over 200 volunteers. And in 2017, we fulfilled more than 2,200 service requests. That's a 22% increase over the previous year. And transportation, our most requested service, totals more than 29,000 miles. Through our financial aid fund, we're able to serve all eligible this Arlington residents, regardless of their ability to play. Thank you for your support. The next speaker is Pete Scampavia, followed by Donna Pastore.
Hi, I'm Pete Scampari. I've been working for Safeway for half my life. I'd rather work at Safeway because it's fun to bag groceries. And people with disabilities deserve to live on their own and they need to work. I was recently in police academy, which I learned about what the police and fire do. Please raise the pay for the police and fire because they deserve better. They save people's lives and without them would be chaos. Good evening. My name is Donna Pastore. I am an active member, volunteer, and as of December 2017, the president of Arlington Neighborhood Village. The county manager's 2019 proposed budget includes a provision for Arlington Neighborhood Village to receive a competitive grant for our financial aid fund. I am, here, I am here to ask for your support for this grant so that more of the county's low-income seniors who choose to age in their own homes can benefit from the support services, social activities, and educational programs that ANV provides for its members. At the recent County 2018 Community Engagement Forum, Forum, participants stressed the importance of identifying ways to help seniors remain engaged in the community as they age. Thank you, Christian Dorsey, for your participation on the panel. Social connections are made naturally when ANV volunteers support seniors in their homes, friendly visits, a friend with whom to take a walk, and respite for caregivers. The ANV volunteers who drive a member to the doctors is also a friend and neighbor who is concerned about the member's health and well-being and alert to signs of increasing frailty. ANV offers so many social and educational opportunities to foster community connections and to combat social isolation with the weekly speaker series, health and wellness programs, field trips, Spanish conversation, uh, Tai Chi practice, and potluck events. My favorite activity to help coordinate is our senior tea, specifically for members 80 years of age or older. These members look forward to this tea every year and love getting together to socialize and to share their life experiences. I thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening and would like to express my appreciation for all the support the county has given us. The next speaker is Cherie Tekamoto, followed by Wayne Burt. Hello, my name's Sherry Takamoto. Um, that young man two guys ago is my um, son, so I'm very proud to say that. I'm also proud to be a member of the Community Services Board and a member of our Dis Developmental Disabilities Advisory Committee. Um, as you've heard, we are asking for $120,000 for a pilot so that more people with disabilities who are in day programs, want to work in Arlington, want to be included, can do so. Um, this year, we um, had a $300,000 cost savings in the developmental disabilities area. And so we're just asking you, can you take some of that and put it to this employment program? It will lead to long-term um, savings in the future. Um, as you know, a person with um, in the day program costs about $50,000. This program is going to cost a lot, um, somewhat in the in the upfront, but in the long run, they estimate that it'll save about $45,000 a year per client. So, if you could please consider this, um, we would appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. The next speaker is Wayne Burt, followed by Atima Omara. Good evening. I'm here to advocate for the Arlington Community Services Board and the Behavioral Health Division. I have a daughter with schizophrenia, so I know that severe mental illness is something that is really never solved. You just treat it the best you can and continue on. And even though my daughter lives in California, I recognize how important having services available, treatment and services is. And uh, I've seen the high quality services develop, uh, delivered by the Arlington BHD, and I hope you can grant their budget requests. One of their major needs is a therapist caseworker, caseworker for young adults 18 to 24. 
Treatment for young adults is especially effective when, it, when an illness is caught early, and that also makes it cost effective because you can sometimes avoid long-term lifetime dependence. Arlington CSB right now is faced with emerging challenges, including the opioid crisis and a growing number of young adults with autism, among others. So I hope you'll be able to honor their budget requests for a mental health therapist for young adults, second, a substance abuse peer outreach specialist, and third, the development disabilities pilot project to support integrated employment in the mainstream employment system. Thank you. The next speaker is Atima Omara, followed by Alex Yellen. Good evening, members of the Arlington County Board. I stand before you as a member of the Community Services Board who has a family member with an intellectual disability. I urge you to consider funding the $120,000 requested for the Pathways Pilot Program that will get more people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to work. Instead of investing in a five day a week support program, day support program, for those who are not working who might be able to, the county can invest now to save money in the long run. Nationally, Virginia is ranked closer to the bottom when it comes to providing resources and support for those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Other states are funding programs that provide as many opportunities for people with disabilities to get to work in a variety of ways. Employment that integrates people with disabilities with the rest of society that can also provide competitive wages is the way to improve quality of life for many with disabilities who want to make, like the rest of us, a career of their own. The quote, integration mandate, unquote, of the Americans with Disabilities Act requires public agencies to provide services in, quote, the most integrated setting appropriate to the needs of qualified individuals with disabilities, unquote. And it was in 2012 that the Department of Justice ruled that Virginia was not in compliance on any of these standards. We have still not yet entirely caught up as a state. We need to live up to the standards of the American Disabilities Act in Virginia. Arlington County, which has set an example in many areas for the rest of the Commonwealth, can be a leader in funding this pilot that would increase integrated and competitive employment opportunities for our citizens with disabilities, not only because it is to be more compliant with the law, but also because it is the right and humane thing to do, to increase access to opportunity for our most vulnerable citizens. Thank you. The next speaker is Alex Yellen, followed by Lucia Claster. Good evening. My name is Alex Yellen, and I'd like to tell you a few things about my son, Zachary. He's 30 years old, he's autistic, and he has many of the conditions that people with that disability have. But on weekday mornings, for the past two and a half years, Zachary gets up every morning and goes to a job, paid job, recycling computers. After Zachary finished Arlington Public Schools, he started going to a day support program run by Service Source at Woodmont. There he was trained in how to recycle computers. And after a few years, he became skilled enough to compete and get a paid competitive job uh, doing equipment recycling at a company that run by Service Source. I'm presenting Zachary's success as something that should be the result for a lot of people with intellectual disabilities. But unfortunately, it's not. Transitioning to employment for someone with a disability, intellectual disability, is very difficult. Zachary had a lot of good fortune in being at a place where the training and the job placement perfectly fit his skills and interests. But that's very unusual. It's really a good example of serendipity. But serendipity is not a good plan. We need to have something more formal to help people to be more like Zachary and his success in getting a job. So the pathways to careers that we have been talking about, we hope that you will be willing and able to fund that so more people with intellectual disabilities can get jobs like Zachary has. Thank you. The next speaker is Lucia Claster, followed by Russell Profesich. Uh, my name is Lucia Claster. I'm the parent of a young man with disabilities. 
He graduated from Arlington Public Schools last year in the outstanding uh, program for employment preparedness. This new innovative program had young adults with disabilities going out three days a week to actual job internships where they were contributing to the community and having two days a week of training. Uh, I also sit on the Community Services Board uh, DD committee and am speaking on it with that hat as well, but also on behalf of all of the families I've gotten to know over the last 20 plus years who have children and adult children with disabilities who are unemployed. When Harris graduated from the program last June, I came out to what I felt was like 1950s America. If he couldn't get himself his own job, and I don't know too many young people at age 21 who have enough job experience to get a paid job right out. All of us start out doing something in an internship role. There was no way to assist him to find the job. The option would be to go and sit in a room with about 40 adults, ages 20 to 60, 70, 80 years old, who hang out during the day-to-day -day program and have the chance to go and maybe take a field trip each day or you know, get out. You know, most young adults with or without disabilities, they want to do something with their lives. They're on social media, they know the computer, they know there's life out there. They want to contribute. They want to be doing something. When I look at what's available now, I think that this Pathways to Careers program offers an opportunity to get these young adults doing something that's useful in the community, being of help to the community, and not a drag on the community. If they continue to stay in day programs, from age 22 until their day they die. It's an unnecessary expense for all citizens to hold, and, and I think it doesn't contribute to making this county or the country a better place. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Russell Profesich, followed by Florence Jones. Thank you, good evening. Um, my name is Russ Profesich. I'm a resident of Arlington County. Um, I'm here to support the County Community Services Board request for additional funding and staffing. I have a 26-year-old son who has recently entered the program suffering from major depression and anxiety. Um, this program has been very helpful to him to be able to manage his depression and, and to increase his ability to function. Um, with his friends and family and, and society, and hopefully become a useful member of society. It's critical to do this, and of course, that the board have adequate funding and adequate staffing. The staff that he's met with so far have been really helpful, very professional, very dedicated to, to their work to help people like my son. Um, but it's also critical that these people, young people, want that they get the help that they need early on before their conditions get worse. And two, that, um, that there's people there that can help them. When they recently started a program where they guarantee that you'll get help the, um, the same day if you call. And I called for my son to get him there. Because often it's like when you get the opportunity where you finally realize you need to, to get help, or he finally agrees that he's willing to do it, then it's critical that the help's available soon, not a week or a month later. And obviously, in order to do that, you need adequate funding and adequate staffing so somebody's there to help them and not say, come back in a week or two. So I really hope that you will seriously consider and support this community board. It's been a tremendous help to me and my son. Thank you. The next speaker is Florence Jones, followed by Jim Jerez. Jim Jerez. Needs not wants should drive county government, but that's not what's occurring in Arlington today. County government has been controlled for almost 40 years by one political party. County government serves an increasing number of special interest constituencies with increasingly extravagant demands. Time to say enough is enough, Ms. Garvey. County government has been addicted to growth for the sake of growth for many years. At least 60,000 more Arlington residents will live here by 2040 with no comprehensive planning to meet future infrastructure needs. Time for a moratorium on redevelopment until a new economic development paradigm can be evaluated and fully vetted. 
I and other independent voters ask for an immediate and comprehensive transparency regarding county government's deal with Amazon and its projected fiscal, social, economic, and environmental impacts in Arlington. If you can't plan for 60,000 resident increases by 2040, how can you plan for Amazon now? I and other independent voters ask you to immediately stop funding wasteful and extravagant plans, programs, infrastructure, so-called Taj Mahal schools with every conceivable amenity but too few classrooms, expensively repurposing neighborhood parks into regional sports, recreation, activity facilities, and funding more transportation and trans transit modalities that completely directly compete with Metro Rail and Metro Bus for riders. Finally, no more budgets like the FY19 budgets where pet special interest constituencies are extravagantly funded by increasing taxes and fees and by cutting popular programs and services that cost little. The next speaker is Sarah Martin, followed by Godum Grigzega Heber. Okay. My name is Gwaitom Gavrak Zabihar. Me too. Yeah, I'm here, Your Honor, to ask you to keep in place the funding of Virginia Corporation Extension Financial Education positions. I attend one of the courses, which is this money, smart pay. Because of this course, my life is changing. I get the same income. I was working, or still I am working the same job, but I was in bankruptcy. I can't pay my bill, my rent, and I was attend to the shelter. When I get out from that, when I took this Money smart pay, I know how to keep my money. Even now I have saving account, which is my first time. Then, please, I want you to keep in place the funding of the Virginia Corporation Extension Financial Education. Thank you. The next speaker is Alan Stovitz, followed by Norman Hill. Good evening. My name is Alan Stovitz. That was Goitam. He was a participant in the Money Smarts class conducted by VCE, Virginia Cooperative Education. And I am a volunteer with VCE. In FY18, the board marked $32,000 for a financial education position, and we need to keep this position. VCE delivers unique and essential coaching in the community that no one else does. Many of our target citizens and at-risk teens can only be reached if the sessions are done on their turf when they can really attend. Department of Human Services does a great job, but they can't go where we Go. VCE goes to the low-income residents and at-risk children of Arlington. No other program does this. We go into juvenile court services to teach financial life skills and empowerment at Argus House and Uli Street. No other program does this. We do financial coaching, some in Spanish, at AHC and APAH Affordable Apartments. After our Money Smarts course, which this gentleman passed, before that course, everyone was late with their rent. Afterwards, no one was. Please maintain this position so we can do this essential work. Thank you. The next speaker is Norman Hill, followed by William Barrett. Madam Chair, county board members, fellow citizens of Arlington, uh, I have a six-point agenda for the budget for 2019. One, a well-equipped 
trained and funded fire, police, and sheriff's department and office of emergency management. Number two, homeless and employment services, including a span. Well, our public library system. Number four, affordable housing trust fund. Number five, continued full support of the Arlington Independent Media, and that includes uh, WERA radio. And last, uh, health and mental health care services, including consumer and peer operated recovery and advocacy, and a living wage for all providers. Thank you for your time, attention, and consideration. The next speaker is William Barrett, followed by Catherine Scruggs. Good evening. It's uh, kind of neat to have a fellow UVA uh, 2007 grad as chair of the board. I uh, wanted to mention a few things uh, that are of concern to me as a uh, resident and homeowner in the county for the last couple of years and also the father uh, of a young child. Uh, first is schools. Um, even though I have, this may surprise you, even though I have a young child and hope to have more, I, the budget for the schools is just way out of control. Um, the cost per student is somewhere around $20,000 per student per year. I mean, you'd think with a large uh, school system you'd get some economies of scale, but uh, that somehow doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, that's a, an equivalent amount of spending to a, uh, you know, maybe not the top tier private schools, but getting pretty close there. Uh, there, surely there's some room in this large school bureaucracy for some cost cutting, and I mean, I, I just have a hard time believing that there isn't. Uh, there has to be something done to reduce the amount of money that's sort of given to the schools to use as they please without any serious oversight from the county board. Uh, second point, uh, the cable administrator position I saw has uh, been proposed to be cut. Uh, that's. I don't have a big problem with that, except that the cable administrator has been very helpful in my neighborhood when Verizon especially, and, and maybe Comcast in some instances, have left wires randomly hanging around dangerously. I've been able to call her or email her, and she's helped to very quickly get those things resolved. Uh, so I hope there'll be some replacement for that if you do cut the position. Uh, last, uh, parking, I'm okay with the rate increase, but I don't think extending the hours is, is a good idea. It's just gonna complicate my family's evening plans, and I think it'll probably hurt some businesses without really increasing revenue for the county. Last of all, I'd like to speak in support of the pay for first responders. I have a former neighbor here tonight who's a police officer in the county, and there's no way he can afford a house anywhere in the county. He's looking you know, way out in Maryland. Thank you. The next speaker is Katherine Scruggs, followed by Abby Crane. Good evening, Chair Crystal, members of the board. I'm Katherine Scruggs. I'm a 43-year homeowner in Arlington, so I know about the increase in assessed home values and the increase in the real estate taxes. I've seen how Arlington's high cost of living has limited housing for low-income as well as middle-income households, including county, police, fire, and schools employees. The housing needs of seniors are expanding with uh, an increase projected of 9,200 seniors, a 75% increase in that population by 2040. The county needs a tax relief program that is sustainable, fiscally responsible, and will serve the comprehensive housing needs of all Arlingtonians, renters and homeowners, low and middle income, seniors and households of disabled persons. The affordable housing master plan included enable Arlington, Arlington residents to age in the community. I was a member of that working group. Many of us had concerns about the current real estate tax relief program because we found the maximum income and asset levels too high and the amount of taxes that were exempted, not just deferred, too high. Last year I participated in the working group on the real estate tax relief program. That program supports 929 senior and disabled homeowners all but 26 had full or partial exemption. That means those taxes will never be repaid. 
For five years from 2011 to 2016, the foregone revenue for Arlington County equals $25,657,000. I urge you to take a further look at the recommendations. Thank you. The next speaker is Abby Crane, followed by Tanya Bugrail. Good evening, my name is Abby Crane and I live in South Arlington, just off Columbia Pike. I'm pleased to speak with you this evening about the benefits customized employment services can bring to Arlington County. I'm an employment facilitator with the Pathways to Careers National Initiative, a partnership between Source America and Service Source in Northern Virginia. I work on a team that helps individuals with significant disabilities find and maintain employment. My role is to facilitate workplace integration by developing a supportive relationship between the employer and the individual. I wanna to talk to you about Catherine. Catherine is on the autism spectrum. She currently works in an internship at Neighborhood Health, a local nonprofit healthcare clinic that serves low-income individuals. There's a branch here in Arlington too. Catherine works in the Quality Assurance Department. She reviews patient files and compiles spreadsheets to see when patients are due for routine exams. When Catherine started working, I facilitated a positive relationship with her supervisor, or as we call it, her natural mentor, through person-centered training processes. I also worked with Catherine's natural mentor on the best ways to train Catherine so she learns most effectively in her workplace. I have faded out my support substantially because Catherine now directs work-related questions to her natural mentor. For example, Catherine approached her supervisor to inform her that she felt uncomfortable eating in the noisy, crowded break room. Her supervisor happily showed her a quiet and more comfortable alternative. Customized employment takes information about an individual's skills and conditions for success and transforms them into a position that meets the individual's career goals and the employer's needs. This unique process provides the individual both a necessary resource and for employers interested in creating inclusive workplaces. It advocates for individuals interested in employment who have previously been considered unemployable by society. Customized employment demonstrates how individuals with disabilities can meaningfully contribute to their employer and local community. Thank you for your time. The next speaker is Tanya Bougebrayal, followed by Todd Erig. <coughs> Good evening, County Board Members. My name is Tanya Bujibarai, and I am a proud Arlingtonian, a Wakefield Precinct voter, and a 2017 graduate of Arlington Neighborhood College, or ANC. I'm standing before you again this year to express my concern on potential budget and staffing cuts that could affect the Civic Development Leadership Program. A couple of points I want to touch on this evening. First, since its inception in 2000, nearly 400 Arlingtonians have graduated from ANC and gone on to become civic association leaders, advisory board members, local activists, and even chairs of county board. ANC exposes students to a large variety of community leaders, all of whom work with the students to provide mentorship and show them community tools and resources available to solve not only their neighborhood issues, but to work across neighborhood lines and solve complex countywide issues. Secondly, and most importantly, I want to address the issue of shifting responsibility for the organizing, managing, and facilitating of ANC beginning next year to the staff in the Division of Community Planning, Housing, and Development. I cannot speak to the caliber of this staff. However, I can speak to the caliber of Marianne Lightman, Jeff Lightman, and Samantha Levin Finley. These folks are true conciliators and subject matter experts in communication, leadership, dialogue, and conflict resolution. It is their hard work and planning efforts that hands down makes this program as effective and meaningful as it is. From my experience with ANC last year, I can tell you that this program will suffer greatly if the subject matter experts are no longer available to devote the time, energy, and yes, even love to the, to the program. I realize that trimming the budget is necessary, but at the risk of sounding dramatic here, I'm gonna say that cutting the roles of Marianne, Jeff, and Samantha as ANC coordinators is to effectively dissolve this program. I sincerely hope that you will consider all of the enrichments and benefits that ANC provides to the entire Arlington community and how important the role of Marianne, Jeff, and Samantha is as you make your budget decisions. Thank you so much for your time. The next speaker is Todd Erig, followed by Kathleen Siebert. Madam Chair, County Board Members, good evening. My name is Todd Erig. 
I have lived and worked in Arlington County for nearly 20 years. I'm the current chair of the board of ASPAN, your longtime partner in ending homelessness in Arlington. As you know, ASPAN has a request for funding in front of you. This is not a supplemental request based on new projects or an expansion of services. Our request is to correct administrative issues that have been discovered in the original contract um, for the Homeless Services Center. This was the first contract ever written for the center, and it is natural for some issues to have arisen. Some have, and we are requesting that these be corrected through a contract amendment. We continue to operate the center under the current contract, so these errors are continuing to create a gap in funding that we are currently backfilling through private fundraising and dipping into our reserves for core contracted services, such as essential personnel coverage and cleaning of the facility. I am here tonight to emphasize that our request is not for new funding, but to ask for reimbursement for this year and next for funds that we have already covered in our contract. ASPAN continues to backfill this gap created by these errors. A contract amendment needs to be done so that the gap is closed permanently and is accurately reflected in the next RFP. We understand that contracts represent shared risks. We are your partner in this contract and accept the financial risks associated with the number of respite patients we serve, increasing staff payrolls, increasing food prices, to name a few. We are not asking you to cover our side of the shared contract risk. We are asking that you fix the administrative errors that were never intended to be variables in this contract. We ask you to direct the county manager to do a contract amendment now so that we can correct these errors and be made whole for essential contract services that we continue to provide and fund. Thank you. The next speaker is Kathleen Siebert, followed by Saif Rahman. Uh, Madam Chair and County Board Members, my name is Kathy Seibert and I'm a longtime Arlingtonian and CEO of ASPAM. I am proud, really proud, to operate the Homeless Services Center as your partner. Since its opening in October 2015, we have been at 95% capacity every night. The county knew that there was a need for a 24-7, 365-day center with shelter, medical respite, and housing services all located together. I am so proud to live in Arlington that values its most vulnerable neighbors and proud to lead the organization that operates the center at a high level of cleanliness, professionalism, and compassion for the 55 to 80 people who stay there each night. Here's a benefit that Arlington County receives. Over the weekends, holidays, and at night, when you are sleeping, staff are on duty. When it snows or we have extreme heat, there are staff on duty. And when the Arlington community comes to volunteer at the center, it is clean, calm, and welcoming. We are not asking, as Todd just mentioned, for a new program, but for an amendment to our contract so that when these essential personnel get sick or take vacation, the county reimburses us for temporary staff to cover for them. In addition, these essential personnel who are there three shifts a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year, receive benefits not covered currently in the contract. Finally, we are asking that the county reimburse ASPAN for the actual cleaning cost, not the estimated cost. So we ask you to direct the county manager to do an expedited amendment today. So it reimburses us for our costs today and next year. Thank you. The next speaker is Saif Rahman, followed by Kirit Mukherjee. Good evening, esteemed members of the Arlington County Board, County Executive, and fellow citizens. It's not a privilege, but a duty that I stand here before you today. My name is Saif Rahman. I'm the Director of Public and Government Affairs at the Dar al Hidra Islamic Center in Falls Church, Virginia, and a member of the Virginians Organized for Interfaith Community Engagement Voice. Uh, I'm here today to address the issue of AHIF allocation for the fiscal 2019 budget. Let me begin with three verses from scripture, if you'll allow me. 
First is from the Quran, uh, Araf, ayah 85. Now hath come to you a clear sign from your Lord. Give just measure and weight, nor withhold from the people the things that are their due. And from Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 27. Don't withhold good from someone entitled to it when you have in hand the power to do so. And from James, chapter 2, verse 15. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for their body, what good is that? Our center serves 1,000 families in Arlington and Fairfax. We specifically have 250 families in, in Arlington County. And in 2017, we assisted 129 of those families with rent assistance. Just this year, we have assisted already 25 families in rent assistance. One of our congregants, a widowed senior citizen of Arlington, currently receives rental assistance and works hard, yet is still struggling to make rent payments and may soon be forced to move away from her home, her place of worship, her job, and her neighborhood. Her story is the story of countless civil and public servants and other residents of Arlington, which we heard from recently. While Voice appreciates the proposed uh, move to the AHIV onto a more sustainable footing, not all the funding would be dedicated or continuous under the proposal. The proposed 13.7 million still falls short, and, and every year we fall short, the goal becomes exponentially harder to achieve. Voice urges the county to increase the AHIF allocation to at least 15 million to the total current year budget and to work hard to find creative solutions to help uh, make a bigger dent in this crisis. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Kirit Mukherjee, followed by Kevin Smith. Good evening, County Board members. Uh, first of all, uh, I support AIM as a very worthy organization. However, I am speaking about affordable housing in the budget, the fiscal budget, contains uh, AHIF funding, in a continuation of AHIF funding. However, in future budgets, it's my belief that the county needs to explore new strategies like other localities are. Just like we have an economic development team, we will need a housing opportunity team to explore things like community land trusts, to look into limited equity partnerships and tenant opportunity to purchase. The nonprofit CAF model uh, th that requires AHIF funding is not meeting our future needs, and it's, it's very important that we explore options like other localities are and that these be funded in the budget. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Kevin Smith, followed by Aislinn Rivera. Aislinn Rivera. Hey, good evening. My name is Aislinn Rivera, and I am here to speak with you all about the Arlington Independent Media Budget Cut. So um, I got started with AIM back in high school. Um, it was summer, I didn't have any plans, and my mom wanted me out of the house. So she sent me an application for Document Arlington Project. I didn't know anything about AIM and I was kind of unsure, but to appease her, I applied and I was selected along with five other high school students. I didn't know what to expect when I started, but I learned so much about documentary production, um, how to use camera equipment, um, interpersonal skills, project management skills, um, how to write a good news story, and those skills I took those skills with me when I went to college, and they're skills that I still use today. Um, sorry, my speech is on my phone on notes. But um, after graduating, I came back to AIM. I started volunteering. I took classes. Um, I volunteered so much, like I became a regular volunteer. I loved doing it. When I'm not working, I'm at AIM. Um, I've lived here all my life, and I've never felt so much a part of the Arlington community than when I am at AIM. And I understand you have reservations about fully funding AIM, um, but I ask that you do so, because I have benefited from and grown as a creative thinker, as a volunteer, as a member of the Arlington community, and as a person from what AIM brings to me. Um, and cutting their budget may deprive others of those same benefits. Thank you. 
The next speaker is Melissa Chang, followed by Arthur Munson. Members of the County Board, my name is Melissa Chang, and my husband and I moved to Arlington nearly 12 years ago. We bought a home in Westover because we love Arlington's excellent schools, cultural diversity, and vast public resources. And as we planted roots in our neighborhood, I had been looking for more ways to engage with our community. About a year and a half ago, I launched a bi-weekly food program, The Melting Pot, on WERA, Arlington's community radio station. Why food? Well, I love Arlington's diverse restaurant options. But food also brings people together. So it's a great way to learn about different cultures and who we are as a community. Since my show started, my listeners learned about Salvadorian food from Jose Zalea, the owner of La Union on Wilson. I talked with the owners of the Chill Zone on North Harrison about how they wanted to introduce Vietnamese coffee and boba to Arlington. In addition to hearing from many local small business owners, my show also featured interviews with clergy like Father Anthony Mesa, priest of St. Timothy, about Coptic Orthodox fasting customs. And through Arlington's sister city program, I met students from Aachen, Germany, who tried tacos for the first time at District Taco. My program would not have been possible without the community platform Arlington Independent Media provides through WERA. The training there has been invaluable, teaching hundreds like myself how to produce broadcast quality shows for radio and TV. And the professional studio in Clarendon provides a safe space for conversations. In the case of my show, restaurant owners, neighbors, and often those representing minority populations are sitting down there to think not only about food, but about their experiences in Arlington and its culture. With that said, I'm asking that you'd consider restoring the full funding for Arlington Independent Media. You'd be helping me continue to serve my community by engaging with the residents here and helping us all learn more about Arlington. Thank you for allowing me to speak. The next speaker is Arthur Munson, followed by Edgar Aranda Yannick. I'll thank everybody in advance. I'm just going to do a bit of ancient history. Back in 1980, I was here when the cable companies were competing for rights to set up in Arlington. The county leaders then laid down some requirements. One of these was that the cable companies provide facilities and equipment for a public access channel that would allow Arlington residents to express their views, providing a true voice for the community. The cable company, Comcast, agreed. In addition, something like 1% of cable revenues were earmarked for the operations of that public access channel. That channel became what is now known as Arlington Independent Media. This arrangement remained in force until December 2016 when the company's franchise agreement was renegotiated with a county representative. The new agreement allowed Comcast to stop providing the facility. And another change was that the 1% of revenues would no longer be earmarked for that channel. It would now be pooled with the rest of the general fund. The source of the revenue is essentially the same. It comes from providers like Verizon and Comcast, rather than from property and other taxes. However, that revenue is now available to other entities. Now, I hear it suggested that funding for the public access channel is taking money from everyone else. And the argument is against the folly of borrowing from Peter, or rather, robbing Peter to pay Paul. However, in this case, looking over the history, Arlington Independent Media, this voice of the community, is Peter. Thank you. The next speaker is Edgar Aranda Yannick, followed by Benedetta Kassil. Uh, thank you, uh, Arlington County members, uh, for allowing me the opportunity to speak uh, today. Uh, my name is Edgar Aranda. Uh, I am an uh, Arlington County resident, a chair of the Virginia Coalition of Latin Organizations, and also I work with the Legal Aid Justice Center. So I am here to request the continuation of the funding for the LJC Vital uh, Immigrant Work, uh, Advocacy Work. As you know, immigrants in Arlington continue, continue to feel threatened by the stepped-up immigration enforcement policies of the current administration. As a result, 
Uh, many of our neighbors face the constant fear of separation from their loved ones or removed from the only home they have known or where they have built lives over several decades. Uh, even those with permission to stay here are now threatened by the end of DACA program or those uh, with temporary protection status, TPS, or immigrant communities desperately need help from friends, neighbors, and allies like the important work of the Legal Aid Justice Center uh, that provides uh, vital advocacy, continued education, and pro bono legal support for immigrant communities uh, residing in Arlington and across of Northern Virginia. For example, uh, Arlington support has allowed us to provide uh, Know Your Rights uh, workshops and families preparedness in case of deportation trainings to con communities across uh, the county, uh, giving uh, immigrants tools to help pro uh, protect their rights. Uh, in for instance, uh, two weeks ago, uh, BACOLA and LJC organized a community forum uh, at the Buckingham Community Center where uh, 40 people uh, show up uh, to learn about their rights and how to exercise them. At the end of the uh, presentation, a county resident told us that it was worth his time learning his rights and learning a plan in case he would be deported because of the imp uh, impeding loss of the, his TPS. But thank you very much, and I hope you can support us. The next speaker is Benedetta Casile, followed by Randy Cohen. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Detta Kissel, and I have been working on affordable housing issues, um, trying to develop affordable housing and preserve affordable housing, uh, particularly with an emphasis on the NAWQ community, but in general. Um, and I've been working with several groups on uh, the concept of land trusts, which are uh, vehicles to um, purchase land and uh, stabilize the cost of land in a, in a, uh, a market like ours where uh, the prices are going up. Um, so, you know, in looking at funding, um, you know, I, I went back and I looked at the 2015 Affordable Housing Master Plan, and I was very pleased um, to see that there are um, wonderful principles in there. Housing affordability is essential um, to achieving Arlington's vision. And, um, and also, you know, we want people who work in Arlington to be able to live in Arlington. Um, and the county government will take a leadership role in, uh, in um, addressing our housing needs. Um, so also in that document, uh, there are projections of what we will need uh, up to 2040. And um, the projection was that we should be adding about 600 units per year. Um, so, you know, looking at the, at the budget, um, it looks like uh, over the past several years, we aren't really funding, funding to meet that. In fact, we're funding to meet maybe less than half of that. Uh, and my particular um, uh, ask is to not reduce the funding. Uh, it's the proposed budget um, reduces the funding uh, from $15 million to, um, uh, I think, 13.7. And so um, we really should be going in the other direction, so please do not reduce the funding. Thank you. The next speaker is Randy Cohen, followed by Michael O'Leary. Good evening, one and all. I moved to Arlington 12 years ago from Boston. I had no professional connections here, so I joined Arlington Independent Media and took several courses. From those courses, I parlayed that knowledge and network opportunities into a position of director in development for a film company, where I also handled the social media for an award-winning first-run documentary. This would not have happened without those classes. Presently, I volunteer weekly at Arlington Independent Media, as well as produce a radio program at WERA called Broadway Bound. My program provides entertainment and trivia and music during evening drive times. That in itself is a community service to commuters. Thursday, I will be hosting Darius Smith, musical director of The Wiz, currently at Ford's Theater. If civic engagement is at the heart of Arlington, a 20% budget cut will drive a stake into the heart of Arlington. At a time when funds are scarce, I urge the, I urge the county to reconsider the proposed cut and fully fund Arlington Independent Media. This cut sends the message that the county does not fully support the idea of civic engagement. I'd also like to add my and extend my support to the firefighters 
as my life was saved by a firefighter as a child. Thank you. The next speaker is Michael O'Leary, followed by Matt Owens. Good evening, my name is Michael O'Leary and I'm here this evening on behalf of the County Council of PTAs uh, and my, my own children. I'm a parent of two twins at uh, Discovery Elementary School. Now many of you on the board may have already received a copy of a resolution that the CCPTA passed. Um, my local PTA, Discovery PTA, passed one as well. The resolution asked that the board try to fund APS above its revenue share this year to ensure that there are no material impacts on the quality of the education that APS provides. Many people here this evening have spoken about Arlington County and how attractive it's become to people moving here, increases in residents, increases in students. But one of the things that does attract people to Arlington, of course, is the quality of the education. There are a lot of people here tonight advocating on behalf of worthy causes and the goal of the CCPA resolution was to let the voice be heard of the parents. Local parents in this county are very good at going to school board meetings and advocating for changes, but they are not as good at reaching out to all of you and talking to those who control the purse strings that give the resources that APS needs to provide the quality of education that it, it can provide. Many of the people that move to Arlington County are gonna benefit from all the great infrastructure improvements, jobs, et cetera. But one of the things that should not be lost in this is that the quality of the education being given to students is something that will also last them a lifetime. I have two twins that are starting out at kindergarten at APS, starting their APS career, and they are going to remember the quality of the education they received, and that quality translates into what they experience in the classroom. The CTPTA, my local PTA, and the parents of this county ask you to consider making sure that APS has the resources it needs to ensure that the quality of education is not impaired. Thank you. The next speaker is Matt Owens, followed by Paul Ferguson. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matt Owens, and May 5th will mark uh, the 16th year of service for Arlington County Police Department for me. I want to take a minute to tell you just how lucky we as a community are. In my career, I've been fortunate to serve this department in many roles. Often these roles afforded me the opportunity to work with other law enforcement agencies in the National Capital Region. One thing these opportunities showed me was that without question, the Arlington County Police Department is the finest, most professional, highest educated, and best trained police force I know. There are all those things while being among the lowest paid. Men and women I work for and with genuinely care about the people they serve. They provide this service at the highest level day in and day out. For example, in 2017, we documented 78,330 citizen contacts. Those citizen encounters included individuals experiencing the worst day of their life, folks unhappy about receiving a traffic ticket, and people we took to jail. Those 78,330 encounters resulted in exactly four sustained citizen complaints. Put simply, that's 0.002% of our interactions resulting in an unhappy citizen. I'm immensely proud of the men and women I serve with. Their level of professionalism and dedication deserve to be compensated in a fair and equitable manner. And as proud as I am to serve alongside them, I'm also worried. We're facing a staffing crisis the likes of which I have not seen in my career. So far this fiscal year, we've lost 31 officers. 11 of those have left since January. Another six have confirmed they will leave by the end of June, and I know of an additional 10 that have confided in me that they are actively seeking employment with other agencies. These fine officers I speak so highly of are being lured away by other agencies who quite simply pay more and allow their officers a real opportunity to live in the county where they work. Our county's mission statement is very clear. Be a diverse and inclusive world-class urban community with secure residential and commercial neighborhoods. I ask you, please listen to the recommendations you're receiving by our association, our union, and our command staff. Figure out a way to improve upon them. Show your police department that you care and that we are in fact an employer of choice. Pay your officers what they're worth and give us a fighting chance to retain them. Thank you. The next speaker. The next speaker is Paul Ferguson, followed by Jenny Ozawa. Paul Ferguson. The next speaker, Jenny Ozawa.
Madam Chair and Arlington County Board, my name is Jenny Ozawa. I am a parent and a member of the Arlington Public Schools Working Group on Immigrant and Refugee Children and Students. We comprise a cross-section of APS parents, principals, administrators, and representatives of groups supporting our immigrant children and families. The community members urge the board to sustain Arlington County's funding in the fiscal year 2019 budget for the Legal Aid Justice Center. As engaged community members, we see firsthand on a weekly, if not daily basis, the negative impact of the heightened risk, uncertainty, and stress that the current immigration environment is creating for our residents. Last year, Arlington County became the first jurisdiction in the state of Virginia to create a pool of dedicated funding for information dissemination and legal representation for immigrant residents facing deportation proceedings. We personally know many families who have taken advantage of the Legal Aid Justice Center services, including filing of DACA renewals and helping families to write powers of attorney to provide for short-term care of children in the case that parents are detained. This service model is a best practice. The county's investment in a dedicated resource has been leveraged by our entire community, our schools, health and human services, nonprofits, and interfaith communities that are supporting immigrants. Consistency is important. We've only been through our first year, and we're just beginning to see the great return on investment. I was at a meeting that Christian Dorsey kindly attended a few months ago, and you asked us what could the county tangibly do to help immigrants, and definitely sustaining the $100,000 level of commitment to the Legal Aid Justice Center would be a great step in that direction. Thank you. The next speaker is Andrew Schneider, followed by Laura McDonald. Good evening, my name is Andrew Schneider and I am the Executive Director of Arlington Thrive. I am a 30 plus year Arlington County resident and the host of Arlington Voices on WERA 96.7 FM. I wanted to say thank you for all that you do for Arlington County, especially our most vulnerable citizens. As you know, Arlington County is one of the richest counties in the United States, but we still have amongst us over 20,000 people living at or near poverty. Each day, Arlington Thrive volunteers take requests from case managers and social workers throughout the Arlington Safety Net to help meet emergency same-day financial requests. These range from medical assistance, prescription assistance, rental assistance, utility assistance, and transportation assistance, as simple as a $40 smart trip card. Our average request is, is less than $150, and we help most people less than two times a year. Our volunteers start taking calls every day at 1 p.m. and usually the money is gone by 1.30 p.m., turning down social workers, case managers, residents throughout the county who will have to come back another day for assistance. So while we thank you for all that you do for the social safety net in Arlington, especially for Arlington Thrive and our continued partnership, we do ask for additional support this year. In this year's fiscal budget, Fiscal year budget, Arlington County requested an additional $50,000 for emergency financial assistance that would, over the course of the year, help an additional 300 households and maybe help us take calls up until 2 p.m. every day. Thank you. The next speaker is Laura McDonald, followed by John Reeder. Good evening. I am an Arlington County resident, an Arlington Public Schools teacher, and a strong believer in wellness. And I am here tonight to ask you not to cut the Office of Community Wellness from the budget. I love Arlington, and we all know that Arlington is an amazing place to live, work, and play. The Office of Community Wellness has offered so many opportunities to me, my family, and the residents of Arlington County. We have attended and loved programs like Arlington Palooza, create, build, and paint, and Saturday health and cooking classes, cooking classes in English and Spanish. We attended the English classes. The wellness team has attended summer fest camps and managed to get my seven-year-old daughter to try new vegetables, which she has continued to eat, and that is no small feat. My daughter benefits from the active recess program at Abingdon Elementary School that may not be maintained if the office is discontinued. As a teacher and parent, I have benefited from the healthy vending program that will be discontinued if the Office of Community Wellness is gone. We all benefit from the smoke-free parks and community gardens in Arlington, both initiatives from the Office of Community Wellness. The community and countywide health programs that will disappear are far-reaching and frankly, a loss for everyone who lives in Arlington. 
I'm saddened by the possibility that we are contemplating a step backwards in the quality of life in this county. These programs are a huge part of what makes Arlington amazing and the place that everyone wants to live. The programs that the Office of Community Wellness provides brings the community together and makes Arlington, Arlington. I urge you to keep the Office of Community Wellness in the budget and keep Arlington a healthy, amazing place to live, work, and play. Thank you. The next speaker is John Reeder, followed by Daniela London. Good evening, members of the board. I'm here as a, uh, a chair of the Arlington Greens. We're asking you tonight to provide $3 million more in funding for additional housing grants to help the lowest income Arlington renters. These funds can be obtained by shifting repa repaid taxes from our real estate tax relief program from tax exemption to tax deferral. The county manager recommended cutting uh, $400,000 from the housing grants program, and he says that this would still meet the demand. This comment is patently ridiculous and counter to our well-established needs identified in the Affordable Housing Master Plan. The lowest income renters in Arlington are also seniors and disabled persons, earning 40% or less of the area income. People who benefit, homeowners from the tax program, can earn up to $100,000 and be living in a million dollar house. The county is 354 households short of your goal for the master plan this year. In FY 2018, the county will spend $9 million for housing grants for 1,200 households. The average family benefiting earned $27,000. Disabled person under the program or a senior earned $14,000. $14,000. We recommend that these real estate taxes be deferred and that the savings be diverted to more housing grants. $3 million for housing grants would help 750 households. Using our tax dollars already budgeted for housing assistance to first help the lowest income Arlington residents, those earning 40% or less of the area income, could be done with a housing grant. Thank you. The next speaker is Daniela London, followed by Regina Richards. Good night, everyone. My name is Daniela Londono. I work with the North Virginia Latino Civil Rights Organization. I'm coming today to tell you a story of a girl who come to Arlington and start a new life. Her beginnings was tough. I have to, she had to repeat high school and move to be the little girl of the house to live with her father, her stepmother, her three stepbrothers, and her cousin in a very small apartment where everyone needed a schedule for the bathroom. She used to live in the living room for almost four years, and her only private space in the apartment was her suitcase. Last summer, this girl graduated from the Arlington Carey Center and move with all her family to a bigger house in the Prince Williams County because it was impossible for them to continue living under that conditions in a such, mass, in a such small space and very expensive one. The reason why I know this story very well is because this girl was, is me. And even when both counties and in the North Virginia, they're very different. I fell in love or Arlington the first time I see it, and having to move was a break hard for me. Now I'm back in Arlington to work with Nolar da Zero, and take me at least two hours to come to work because I don't have a car. I could quit my job and I could move closer, but I really love Arlington so much that I want to give back to this community. I'm speaking today with boys and Nola Rosero with the hope that we'll be in the future affordable housing for people like me, people who come to Arlington and this place will become our first home and our February place in the United States. Thank you. The next speaker is Regina Richards followed by Eliana Bergios.
Good evening to the board. Uh, my name is Regina Richardson. So just to make that correction, I was born here. I grew up in the previously segregated area of Halls Hill, near the famous wall that separated blacks from whites. I was one of the first black children born in the Allison Hospital, which is known as Virginia Hospital today. My daughters, myself, my family, my mom, everyone, we still here in Arlington. I am an assistant teacher for APS. I like to say I work for my students and I'm very dedicated to my job. For every one of my 23 years I've worked for Arlington APS, I have a second job for 19 years with Parks and Recreation, and now I'm a child care provider. The salary has never been enough with everything rising cost of housing. Currently, I pay 60% of my APS salary on rent. I have reached the top of the tier of the salary scale for assistant teachers, yet I have six more years to work until I can retire. There will be no more raises, but rent will rise. I live in fear that I will be priced out. Isn't it ironic that as black people, we were squeezed into Halls Hill, where now million dollar homes are going up and we are being squeezed out this time, maybe out of the county completely. What I see in my lifetime is white privilege and I see racism. I stand before you with voice behind me as we ask, do you believe the workers you, who serve the people of Arlington as bus drivers, healthcare workers, cafeteria workers, child care providers, APS support staff, and more should be able to live in Arlington where we work? Show us. Voice and I are asking you to renew your commitment to a diverse and inclusion community and to build up the Arlington community with home for us. Thank you. The next speaker, the next speaker is Ileana Bergios, followed by Ted Hicks. Hello. Hi. My name is Ileana Burgos. Thank you for listening to our concerns tonight. Everyone here knows the Virginia Hospital Center, one of the largest employers in Arlington. I worked there full time. Attending a small college in Central Virginia was nice, but there were few opportunities for growth. I decided to change schools and follow my passion in nursing. I was accepted into Chamberlain College of Nursing in, Tri in Crystal City as a full-time student. In order to pay for school, I need a job. I was hired by Virginia Hospital Center as their certified nursing assistant working three 12-hour shifts a week. My illusion of moving into Arlington with my good paying job quickly faded when I found out how much it would cost to live here. I was shocked. It turned out that I would have to have several um, roommates in a tiny apartment just to make ends meet. At 25, I never thought I would need to move back to my parents' house in Woodbridge. But here I am. I work full time serving the Arlington community. I go to school full time in Arlington. I do my volunteer work in Arlington in places like AFAC. I shop, dine, and take dance classes here. I'm a valuable member of the Arlington community, but because of the ridiculous housing prices in the community I serve, I have to drive hundreds of miles each week to get here. I thought to have, I thought I'd just have to endure the situation, but talking to others lit a little fire in me, and we can organize to make changes. I stand here before you with voice and urge you to take bold steps to make sure there is a supply of affordable housing for young people like me. Take care of the Affordable Housing Investment Fund. If you don't, people like me, value people who want to be here and contribute and serve Arlington community will not be able to do so and will be forced to leave and seek opportunity elsewhere. Thank you. The next speaker is Ted Hicks, followed by Jacqueline Abrams. Good evening. You know, as I listened to many of the speakers before, I realized something, and that is affordable housing is always going to be at the forefront. People have to have a home. In Arlington County, I've lived here for 40 years, and I've seen it change. But one thing is always important in Arlington, and that's that we look out for each other. You can't have a neighbor unless they have somewhere to go to. I've tried to have a commitment to help out in, in any way that I can. And, as such, right now, I'm a board member of APA, and I thought about it earlier tonight. 
Arlington Partnership for Affordable Housing. That's about as clear as it needs to be that we need a partnership of everyone in Arlington County. The Arlington Way should be used in a manner in which people find solutions for their neighbors. We're the talk of the whole area where people want to come and visit. Many of them are transplanted from other parts of, of the, the country, the world. But we take transplants and we turn them into Arlingtonians. They stay here after they get here. They talk about where else they went, but they invite their friends to come here to visit them. And more and more, the burgeoning area here is finding itself where we're out outperforming ourselves from the aspect of that we do too good of a job of having a good life here. But everyone wants to have that. So AHIF needs to always be seen as the most important vehicle financially through the master plan for us to be able to make these developments work. We have NASA, NASA that just came on board. We have a Hilton down on Lee Highway. Those places have workers. They're not all workers that are making large sums of money. There's people that are going to be visiting the fire department, visiting uh, people that work for the school system, et cetera. And we want them to come here, see a good place to live, and then stay. Thank you. The next speaker is Jacqueline Abrams, followed by Paula Laser. I'm Jackie Abrams, the treasurer of the Arlington County Fair, which has been a tradition in our community for more than 40 years, and the county board has been a long-standing supporter of this cherished event. Most people do not realize that the largest community-wide event in Arlington is planned by volunteers with no paid staff or committed funding for Arlington County. Faced with board turnover and rising costs, the Arlington County Fair Board of Directors submitted two requests to the county board for ongoing funds. The first, $50,000 to hire a fair manager to help coordinate and execute the annual Arlington County Fair, and the second $50,000 to help offset increasing county costs associated with the fair. As an all-volunteer organization, unpaid positions such as vice chair or treasurer often spend more than 20 hours a week on fair planning on top of full-time jobs and personal obligations. This leads to a high turnover rate amongst board members. We hope to provide continuity to the fair through the hiring of our first paid position. In addition to the funding request for a fair manager, the fair board would also like committed support from Arlington County to help, to help offset steadily increasing costs associated with the fair, such as police, shuttles, and facility maintenance. The percentage of our expenses going to court ser county services has gone from 47% to 55% both due to an increase in county service cost as well as reduction expenses such as free community programming with more than, than $100,000 returned to the county fair. The fair, I'm sorry, returned to the county. The fair has had to cut free educational programming and entertainment that attracts so many to the fairgrounds. Finally, with construction on site and limited parking, the fair relies on DPR staff to drive the shuttles carrying fair goers to the back and forth to the fairgrounds. We're concerned about the cost to parks transportation budget, that if we have shuttles, we may not have drivers impacting the transportation. Thank you for listening to us. The next speaker is Nacha Cloth. I'm sorry, Paula Lacer, followed by Nacha Cloth. Good evening, I'm radio host of Education Innovations on WERA-FM. The program explores the multiple ways that students learn by doing and make the connection between education and a future career. I'm here to speak about why Arlington Independent Media and WERA are important to this community. WERA and AIM provide a unique platform to reflect the rich tapestry that makes up Arlington and to draw attention to the issues that shape who we are. As you can see from tonight's gathering, there are so many challenges facing Arlington. Among them, fair pay for our first responders, affordable housing and homeless services, 
the integration into the workforce of those with mental health, physical, and intellectual disabilities and the plight of immigrant children. Coming before the board tonight is an invaluable way for them to have their voices heard. AIM and WERA want to continue to help such voices be heard too. The slogan of our community television and radio station is raise your voice. Please keep us funded at a level that enables us to do that. The next speaker is Nacha Cloth, followed by John Cloth. Good evening, members of the Arlington County government. Um, I send you a letter to all of you. Thank you, Madam Chair Crystal, for replying twice to my message. Uh, my name is Maria Ignacia Clough. I'm a resident of Virginia and an American by choice. My ask, protect Arlington independent media because by protecting AIM, you are protecting the healthy diversity and safety of all our residents. Love thy neighbor, no exceptions. We all know what's going on at the federal level, at the state level, at the county level, in places such as Prince Williams and Culpeper. We are a nation of immigrants, and right now, immigrants are under attack. My ask, protect Arlington Independent Media, because by protecting AIM, you are protecting the healthy diversity and safety of all our residents. I don't want to, and I won't go gently into the good night. And history will not be gent gentle with any of us unless we stand and deliver. My ask, protect Arlington independent media because by protecting AIM, you are protecting the healthy diversity and safety of all our residents. Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it and please consider my ask. The next speaker is John Claw, followed by Wes Fishner. Madam Chair Crystal, members of the county board, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for having me this evening. I have the unenviable task of following my spouse um, and formidable as well. But I want to reinforce her message about AIM. Uh, I cannot speak as eloquently as so many people here tonight about AIM, but it is a treasure in the county. We moved to the county in 1996, so we are nearly 22 re uh, year residents of the county. And when we first moved here, we have had the good fortune of meeting James Hunter, who probably all of you knew. And I urge you to remember him and him protecting our progressive values. He would not be cutting Ames' budget. He, we always remember him as protecting immigrants. And I am not here to stand before you today to ask you to cut other worthy causes, such as these brave first responders and the LAJC, with whom we volunteer with as a household as well, who do such important work for our immigrant community. So I merely ask and echo that you listen to his spirit and take the leadership positions that you need to take to not make this budget process a zero-sum game, but to come up with creative solutions. Paul will come up to hear you to, to speak with you later today and give a three minute proposal. He has spoken with you individually and, and is open, and I know AIM is very open to creative budget solutions to preserve and protect our progressive values and who we are as Arlingtonians. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Wes Fishner, followed by Kate Bates. Madam Chairman, members of the board, thank you all so much. My name is Wes Fisher. I'm here on behalf of the Arlington County Republican Committee. Uh, we believe that the county board should support responsible and cost-effective spending in order to provide world-class services while continuing to protect hardworking Arlington taxpayers. It seems that the two biggest pressures on the county budget this year are the metro and schools. Um, 
while the Metro is a great resource, we think that the um, county should know um, what that the Metro is working to fix a lot of these issues that are plaguing us in our day-to-day -day commutes so often. And it's important to remember while building new schools and things like that, that it's world-class teachers and top-notch resources for students that make our schools so great and not um, magnificent and overly expensive structures. Um, as a young person starting my career in Arlington, I'm very concerned that constant budget pressures could lead to tax increases, rate increases, fee increases, parking meter increases that just kind of add a little bit more and more to the daily cost of living in this great county and uh, could unfortunately push some, some of us uh, further down the road into um, Fairfax, Falls Church, and uh, maybe even uh, Maryland. Um, but thank you all so much for your service to the county. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you'll take a look at uh, your spending and thank you all so much. The next speaker is Kate Bates, followed by Michael Shea. Good evening. I'm Kate Bates, Arlington resident for over a decade, but here, as usual, in my professional capacity as president and CEO of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. First and foremost, the Chamber is appreciative of the efforts of staff in preparation of the budget, which we realize is no easy feat any year, particularly in this particularly challenging lean time. So, Mr. Manager, thank you, and thank you to your team. We know how hard you work on this. I do not envy the position that the board is in with so many amazing worthy causes, many of which were represented tonight, um, but we know that you're up for the charge and realize again the importance of keeping the tax rate flat as you all have proposed that that does typically mean still increasing for a lot of people as both residents and businesses as their assessments go up. So wanted to point that out as well. As noted in our April 2nd letter, which goes into a lot of these items in more detail, uh, we are genuinely support, generally supportive of the draft budget, but there are a few areas of concern for us, um, two in which we're concerned about the budget putting short-term funding cuts over long-term planning in terms of both the reduction of the Crystal City TIF and the Lee Highway planning funds. Um, again, we have championed for expediently planning the Lee Highway area and moving that up, but we don't want that to be done at the expense of a thorough process in the Housing Conservation District process, which was rushed through last year. We don't want that to become the default mechanism. Um, I know I'm I'm a little limited on time. So secondly, two areas where we're concerned about a lack of community process and things being just pushed into the budget are in terms of parking fee hours, as well as the infamous recycling fee that was imposed about a year ago. Um, parking fee hours, again, the last time the chamber has heard from county staff on this was in 2015. And at that time, we surveyed all of our retail members who were all unanimously opposed to extension. So we would love to see further dialogue before a policy change like this happens. Um, we go into detail in terms of recycling fee and some of the commitments that were made to us from DES staff about surveying all businesses who had the fee opposed on them. That did not happen because we didn't get the letter as either a convener of business nor as someone who pays the fee ourselves. Thank you all. We appreciate all of your time this evening as well as the comments from our fellow residents. Thank you. The next speaker is Michael Shea followed by LJ Sauter. Good evening, members of the county board, clerk of the board, county manager and his staff. Um, I am Michael Shea. I have to clear up one thing. I do not work for Arlington Independent Media. Uh, I often am told that, or that's assumed, because I volunteered so many hours. And I'm not alone in that. A lot of people in this room, and some people who are not in this room, volunteer so many hours, people assume that it's a job. But that volunteer energy is exactly an important reason uh, to restore the funding for Arlington Independent Media, which is my ask. Uh, Arlington Independent Media, with a very modest investment from the county, is able to leverage the volunteer energy of hundreds of people like myself, which engages thousands of people in the community to be directly involved in the programs, which in turn allows tens of thousands of people in the community to benefit from that programming. And that programming offers many benefits, particularly in the way it extends and deepens the conversations that we have as a community. We have a lot of conversation in Arlington. We call it the Arlington Way. Um, we have a lot of commissions. We have county board members who work tirelessly to extend that kind of conversation. But in a lot of communities, those sort of official channels are kind of where it ends. And a lot of communities, even in our area, the only other place where a community discussion is happening is through the anonymous snark of social media. Arlington is better than that. I'm not saying we don't have some anonymous snark. But through Arlington Media, we have an opportunity for shows like Paula's program on educational innovations. 
We have programs like Brandon Charles where we, where we get to hear the real personal story of the experience of being disabled in this world. Um, I think we can draw a direct line from the very thoughtful AIM programming that County Board Member Christian Dorsey hosted and led a conversation to the very thoughtful discussions he brings to the County Board now. So I know it's a tight budget, but I urge you to restore Arlington's uh, full funding and continue the conversation in our great community. Thank you. The next speaker is LJ Sauter Jr. followed by Morgan Flood. Good evening. My name is LJ Sauter Jr. I live at 4811 16th Road North, 22207. I appear before you tonight to request your consideration of a simple idea that would enable older, long-term res Arlington residents to continue living out their years, aging in place, in the communities where they spent most of their lives. The proposal is to freeze the property tax on any residential property owned by the same family for more than 30 years. The tax would then be reset to contemporary, contemporary rates when the property is sold. This would have the effect of stabilizing the property tax at a fixed value for the duration of the current owner's time in the home. I've lived in Arlington for almost 40 years, and I've seen the property tax increase substantially over that period. But it's something folks take in stride when they're in their income producing parts of their lives. That's not so with those of us who've retired and are on a fixed income. My property tax increased by over 6% this year, well above the rate of inflation. My house didn't get any bigger and I didn't make any more money, but somehow the land and the building both increased in value. The point is the annual increase in the property tax hurts retirees and I suggest that if you're owned a property for more than 30 years, you've seen enough of the increases. We simply no longer have the means to continue paying more at this stage of our lives. Many of us don't want to move to Loudoun or West Virginia to cope with the line item in our budget that grows uncontrollably. Out of time, thank you. The next speaker is Morgan Flood, followed by Kevin Smith. Morgan Flood. The next speaker is Kevin Smith. Good evening, board at all. My name is Kevin Smith. I'm a semi-retired and former builder of Arlington, developer of the subway corridor back from the days of Ellen Ballsman and um, Jim Hunter. Anyways, I come with a suggestion, uh, not for the county to spend money, but to save millions through criminal justice reform. I'm just gonna read, I'm gonna leave you with these excerpts and I'm just gonna read a little bit because it can't be read all in two minutes, but just to give you a general idea. Criminal justice reform is not about going easy on criminals. It's about finding techniques to stop people from continuing to commit crimes. It's about turning lives around and it can save a boatload of money. Violent criminals, murderers, gang members, and the like still need to be in jail, but many other lesser offenders can be turned around into productive, working, self-sufficient citizens. It takes some work, but the payoff is a society with less crime, lower jail costs, and more productive citizens. I think we all realize that countries in Europe and other places in the United States that treat substance abuse as a medical condition versus a crime have lower crime and lower drug use. Um, another, um, uh, a year in Arlington County Jail cost approximately $50,000 a person. <clears throat> uh, there are currently approximately 600 people in Arlington Jail. That's, it's $134 a day. That's $80,000 a day to jail people in Arlington. <clears throat> that, um, that runs into $30 million a year. 70% of those people are non-Arlingtonians. That's $20 million a year. Uh, those unable to post bond are held in jail for three or four months or more um, at a cost of $4,000 a month 
for sometimes for crimes that are like trespass and disorderly conduct that had carry sentences of 30 days or less. New Jersey uh, reduced their jail population by 37% by changing their bond policy. I'm gonna leave you all with this. Hopefully you'll read it and take, uh, take heed. Thank you. The next speaker is Paul Ferguson. Madam Chairman, members of the County Board, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, back when I served in your position, I'm not sure we always had the same policy of kindness. If you missed your turn, sometimes you just missed your turn. So you're kind to allow me to speak. Uh, there, I've, gotten, I've enjoyed hearing a number of uh, speakers talk about things that they hope to be spared from cuts. And I do want to say that uh, Arlington Independent Media, I got my start with uh, round ball wrap up and Arlington Skins and I'll always appreciate the uh, time that they allowed me to uh, have at that studio. Uh, I also uh, work in the same building with public safety, so I uh, certainly support their cause and those of affordable housing and the others that have spoken before you. It probably will not surprise you that I'm here to uh, testify about the air budget. Uh, global warming is a issue that uh, is probably for me is, is the most serious issue that we face as a world. So uh, Arlington's environmental programs are certainly not going to solve those problems alone. But why they're so important is that the innovative policies that you have adopted as a board and that past boards have adopted before you um, have been followed by other localities. So together, following that Arlington model, and in fairness, Arlington probably got some things from other jurisdictions too that were innovative before uh, we started our programs. All of that adds up to uh, be a piece of the puzzle of the solution. It's also one of your competitive advantages from an economic development point of view. Uh, when companies are looking to come to a particular location, they want a company, they want a locality that acknowledges the problem of climate change and global warming. Uh, they want the transit-oriented development policies that Arlington has. So please don't do something that would lose that competitive advantage. And, uh, please at least minimize the cuts to air, if not uh, sparing them altogether. I'll see you on Thursday to talk about the residential utility tax. The next speaker is Paul Lee Valley. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and members of the County Board. Thank you for providing me with this opportunity to uh, testify tonight. Um, I'm here to, tonight to simply provide you with some facts about AIM and WERA and then offer a modest proposal. So for example, uh, fact, AIM does a tremendous amount of fundraising. Last year, almost $220,000, and that was a 26% increase over the year before. And this year, we're on a pace to far exceed that. Fact, every year, AIM members contribute more than 5,000 hours of expert technical assistance. Now, a typical hourly rate for expert assistance is about 50 bucks an hour, which is what we're charging you to provide the AIM employee who is running the cameras for tonight's meeting. Uh, so we can confidently calculate that our volunteers are contributing $250,000 every year to AIM. Fact, when the franchise agreement was renewed in 2016, we were told that since the communications tax was expected to go down each year, we should expect a 5% reduction each year in the funding that the county provides us. Uh, fact, the communication tax is projected to go down this year by 4.2%. The proposed fact, the proposed budget calls for a 20% cut to AIM's funding. Fact, AIM is remarkably frugal and efficient. Every hour of content produced at AIM costs about $85. By contrast, every hour of content produced by ATV, the county's channel, costs about $1,500. Fact, AIM is incredibly productive. Last year, AIM provided direct service to 101 community organizations, many of whom were here tonight testifying, trained 993 people in basic and advanced media production, produced 5,711 hours of media content, programmed a radio station and a TV station, and ran two websites. Fact, AIM is the best community media center in the nation. Having won this award 10 times, that's a national record. Fact. Online analytics show thousands of viewers and listeners for AIM and WERA every month. 
fact, as giant conglomerates gobble, gobble up more local stations, we need independent sources of news and information now more than ever before. Fact, Arlington claims civic engagement to be at the heart of our community. AIM and WERA are civic engagement, happening every day just down the street. So here's a proposal. Let's establish a committee of local residents to help us chart a path forward for AIM and WERA. We're willing and eager to consider all ideas. Let's work together to figure out a way to leverage what AIM can offer our community and make it even more effective and self-sustaining. But please, don't kill it in the meantime. Thank you. The next speaker is Audrey Clement, followed by Wes Sanchez. I'm Audrey Clement from Westover. The county manager's proposed budget calls for closing a $20.5 million gap with $9.3 million in expenditure reductions, $6.6 .6 million in increased taxes and fees, and $39.0 million in savings. While I applaud the move to streamline operations, this budget lays an ax to a whole slew of county programs, some of which are critical to county operations. Most alarming is a 59.1% reduction in PAYGO capital budget, including $1.6 million for street paving. While an $11 million bond issue is supposed to cover paving costs later on this year, I think many of us will agree that Arlington streets are subpar. With a permanent funding source having been secured, however, the county's sacred cow, Arlington Housing Investment Fund, or AHIF, dodges the bullet. Thenceforth, 49% of the AHIF budget will be funded by increased utility taxes. AHIF is untouchable, but the housing it provides is anything but affordable. Consider that AHIF funds have been leveraged to subsidize 249 apartment units at Queens Court in West Roslyn. The 90 units under construction right now will cost over $39 million to build, or approximately $433,000 per unit. That's the cost of 90 luxury condominiums on the open market. And it's typical of how AHIF is being abused. In May 2017, County Board signed off on an AHIF deal for 173 units at Gilliam Place on the Pike for a total cost of $60.8 million or $351,000 per unit. In April 2016, it approved another AHIF deal for 229 units at Columbia Hills on the Pike for $88.8 .8 million or $388,000 per unit. The tax gouging doesn't end with AHIF. Because the so-called committed affordable units it subsidizes will be unaffordable to many low-income tenants, taxpayers will have to subsidize the rent in perpetuity through housing grants. Meanwhile, County Board is sitting on its hands as the remainder of the genuinely affordable garden apartments in Westover are demolished. In fact, the county attorney recently ruled that two Westover apartment buildings must go down because the county approved luxury townhomes on the site just one day before County Board imposed a moratorium on demolitions. There goes affordable housing, folks, and street maintenance to boot in the fiscal 19 budget. The next speaker is Wes Sanchez, followed by Sandy Cr Chess Round. Wes Sanchez. The next speaker is Sandy Chess Round. Sandy Chess Round. Good evening. My name is Sandy Chesron, and I'm the president of the Lee Highway Alliance. Thank you once again for giving LHA an opportunity to testify in support of increased funding for Lee Highway initiatives. On March 24th, I participated in the March for Our Lives. What an amazing experience to see all of those children who so believed in civic engagement and how that distinguishes us from so many countries. Let us nurture those citizens to believe in their government's leadership and promises. 
Winston Churchill implored that we strive for noble causes and make this muddled world a better place for those who will live in it after we are gone. Tonight I appear to be standing before you alone, but I am not. I have 230 people standing with me who have signed a petition. Those people include residents representing 16 civic associations, landowners, developers, businesses, and others who believe in the importance of the revitalization of the Lee Highway Corridor. The petition states, with regard to the fiscal year 2019 budget, we urge the county board to increase funding for the Lee Highway Alliance from 60,500 to 85,000. This will allow LHA to successfully operate with the full-time executive director. We also urge that the county fully fund and implement the Lee Highway Planning Initiative. The recently approved housing conservation districts make planning even more urgent. Each delay results in a missed opportunity to shape revitalization and to increase the quality of life and the tax base in Arlington's last unplanned corridor. We sympathize with the county manager in this most difficult budget, but neighborhoods shape our lives. Economies shape our lives. The Lee Corridor is our main street and economic spine that binds us all, now and in the future. After decades of neglect, it deserves to be a top priority and to be replanned with robust stakeholder engagement. Change is not only coming, it has arrived. Successful placemaking will only happen with your leadership. Help us to efficiently engage in a robust process. Together we will use land use as a tool to, to create a sustainable path forward and enhanced economic prosperity for the corridor and the county. Thank you. The next speaker is Mar Mary Margaret Whipple, followed by Lucia de Cordre. I'm Mary Margaret Whipple, chair of the board of the Alliance for Housing Solutions. First, I want to say that we understand this is a very tough budget year. <laughs> so the county needs to be crystal clear about its priorities. AHS believes that implementing the Affordable Housing Master Plan is one of the county's top priorities, and its funding should reflect that priority. The economic future of Arlington County depends on providing housing to meet the needs of our population. Although the county adopted the master plan unanimously in 2015, really and truly progress has been very slow. Last fiscal year, the county approved 276 new committed affordable units, but lost 335 units that were market rate affordable and at the, at the same level. Clearly the pace is not adequate. With regard to this year's budget, we have four priorities to share. First, we cannot let the county's investment in the Affordable Housing Investment Fund slide backward. In 2018, the county allocated 15 million, but this year's budget proposes 13.7. While we are pleased that more funds are in the ongoing budget, we do not support proposals that reduce the total annual AHIF allocation. Remember that AHIF is a very efficient leveraged fund. Every dollar allocated from the fund is worth five times that amount. Moreover, because of the modest size of the AHIF budget, a potential cut of 1.3 million has a greater relative impact. Second, we continue to support the recommendations included in the Fulfilling the Promise report. To that end, we recommend that the county incorporate certain fee waivers for affordable housing developments into this budget. Third, we're disappointed to see a lack of action on reforms to the real estate tax relief program. AHS supports making changes and moving toward a primarily deferral-based system to reduce the cost of the program. Any savings should be reallocated now to other higher priority housing needs, such as AHIF. Fourth, AHS supports an increase in the maximum allowable rents for the housing grants program. It provides rental assistance for very low-income households. 
Unfortunately, the maximum rent levels have not been updated since 2010 and have not kept pace with Arlington's market reality. These low rents are keeping demand for the program artificially low, and the low rents are forcing those who do participate in the program to pay an increasing share of their income for rent. Finally, AHS believes it's vital to sustain the county's effort on the Lee Highway planning process, including funding for the Lee Highway Alliance. Thank you very much for your time. The next speaker is Lucia de Cordre, followed by Becky Willosen. Good evening. Um, good evening. Uh, Chair Crystal and members of the County Board. I'm Lucia de Cordre and the Executive Director of the Lee Highway Alliance, and we thank you for this opportunity to talk about the budget. This budget year, our fledgling organization faces two uphill challenges. Firstly, a modest county grant of 60,000 to which we're asking an addition of 25,000 to help achieve our approved work plan. And secondly, the proposed reduction of, fi of 500,000 or two-thirds of our long-awaited and promised Lee Highway planning initiative. We understand this is a fiscally challenging year and your focus must be on programs that are viable and provide the most bang for the buck. Over the past year, we've proven that the Lee Highway Alliance has is a highly viable organization able to provide return on investment. We represent thousands of residents and property owners over 300 businesses and 18 civic associations with one staff member. Our mission supports and engages the community in a way that energizes and strengthens our corridor and we are an active liaison between the county government and the community. Our programs facilitate community engagement and our continuing education educational forums on county issues have been standing room only, and you all have attended at least one of those, and you understand the value they provide. Our trusted and proven ability to work with the residents, businesses, and civic associations will be invaluable during the planning initiative. Saving the county and its consultants time and money, particularly if the, if the planning funding is cut, this is a big return on investment and a big bang for the buck. Secondly, we urge you to fully fund the long-awaited and desperately needed Lee Highway Planning Initiative. The county has a fiscal responsibility to increase its tax base while fulfilling its affordable housing and community needs. Market demand cannot be ignored and our stakeholders deserve the same comprehensive efforts as other um, parts of the county have received. Since I joined the organization, four commercial properties on Route 29 have come to the Alliance seeking both guidance and support for their applications, and others are waiting in the wings. This is nearly one a month. That speaks volumes for both the Alliance and for the urgent need of the comprehensive plan. The county must guide and strategically maximize the potential here at the start of this critical corridor that crosses the country for our 18 communities and for the strength of the county as a whole. Again, bringing return on investment and a big bang for the buck. And funding, it is the fair thing to do. Thank you. The next speaker is Becky Willosen, followed by Lisa Nesenson. Good evening. My name is Becky Wellison, and I'm an attorney serving Arlington County residents at Legal Aid Justice Center, which you've heard a little bit about tonight. Uh, I would like to start by thanking Arlington County for having the foresight and commitment to all of its residents to create an innovative uh, immigrant services program with LAJC, and I urge them to fully fund it in this next cycle. LAJC has hit the ground running to quickly ramp up services and fill the gap for immigrants in Arlington as the Trump administration makes good on its promises to terrorize immigrants. Since being awarded our grant last October, we've already provided free legal consultations to 33 residents, trained over 400 community members and Arlington service providers, and provided full legal representation for three Arlington residents in immigration bond hearings. Amidst this work, the administration has revealed a near 
constant stream of new and increasingly horrifying immigration policy changes. For example, we recently learned that the Trump administration will propose new rules targeted at hurting families that have entered and remained in the US lawfully. This rule would force families, including US citizen children, to choose between getting the help they need, whether it's enough food to eat or medical care, and reuniting with those they love or even keeping their families together at all. This will only contribute to the widespread fear immigrants feel and will mean that families who need help will be too afraid to get it. LAGC will continue to work hard to mitigate these fears through constant community outreach and free trainings and free individual consultations available in Arlington community centers. Individual consultations will continue to be essential. For example, earlier this year, the administration set a termination date for temporary protected status, or TPS, for immigrants from El Salvador, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Sudan, and it's likely to do so for immigrants from Honduras. Families with TPS holders in them are middle class families. They have work authorization, they have US citizen children, and they have long standing deep connections to the community. With the end of TPS in a year and a half, they will lose their work permits and likely their jobs. Families that were once independent and self-sufficient may fall into poverty. Many parents will likely be placed in removal proceedings or deported. The silver lining, if there is one in all of this, is that we know it's coming. And Arlington County can begin to plan and take action now to soften the certain blow. Of the many immigration consultations I have done, the majority of people are eligible for some form of relief, but they have to know that they're eligible and know how to get it. Arlington can and should continue to fund LAJC to be there for immigrants in Arlington, addressing their fears, answering their questions, and helping them stay in their communities with their families and with the people they love. Thank you very much. The, le the next speaker is Lisa Nesenson, followed by Kate Summers. Kate Summers. Thank you, good evening. My name is Kate Summers and I am the president of the Friends of the Arlington Public Library Board, or as we're known in the community, FOL. FOL's mission is to support Arlington's public library system and we accomplish this mission in three ways. First, we fundraise through membership drives, use bookstores at select branches, and through our twice annual book sales. Dollars earned through these efforts fund important library programming, and we're committed to continuing this high level of support, despite a noticeable drop in book donations. Second, our volunteers log thousands of hours a year at local library branches. We sort and price donated materials, staff events, and man shifts at book sales. And lastly, we advocate for the library and its mission through our interactions with county officials. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the library's budget and to encourage you to increase funding for this important community resource. Every single day, members of the Arlington County community rely on their public library for information, support, guidance, job training, or simply as a safe place to learn. The library provides opportunity for all without discrimination or judgment and acts as a safety net for the most vulnerable in our community. I often marvel at the dedication and passion exhibited by so many of your library staff and our full volunteers. The library does so much for so many. It plays many different roles and fills so many gaps. It is an honor to re render support and we call upon the board to do the same. The core mission of the public library is to create a community of well-informed citizens and to do this, the library must have materials for the community to read, listen to, and experience. The library must have funding to buy resources in all formats and to make them available in a timely manner. The current financial situation does not allow them to do this. Arlington Public Library's material budget has not seen an increase in over a decade, and this year they are losing the one-time money received in the past. This is not sustainable, and we continue to experience impacts. Today, the average wait time for a popular title in ebook or hardcover format is over 20 weeks. 
One example, the current wait time for the popular book, The Great Alone, wonderful book, 36 weeks we're waiting to get our hands on that book. Many other titles have similar waits. We have people in the community waiting over half a year for some titles. We are seeing titles with 190 to 200 people in the queue. This is common. Arlingtonians are demonstrating through these incredible hold numbers an insatiable desire to read. The metrics are available. Our citizens are hungry for books. And we call on you to support the library with an increase in, in funding. Thank you. The next speaker is Jennifer Endo. I didn't realize um, one of my kids needed a ride unexpectedly, and it made me late. So here I am with the last word. <laughs> uh, my name is Jennifer Endo, and I work for AHC Inc., an affordable housing developer here in Arlington. I also am an Arlington resident and mother of three sons in the Arlington schools. I love the diverse, vibrant community that we have created here in Arlington. And I love the fact that my children have had the good fortune to learn global perspectives from their friends. Part of what makes Arlington great is our thoughtful approach to growth. A few years ago, as a community, we worked hard to create the Affordable Housing Master Plan that carefully analyzed the affordable housing needs for the long-term sustainability of the county. Despite good intentions, we have yet to meet the goals of that plan. The proposed fiscal year 19 AHIF budget of 13.7 million is a decrease from the fiscal year 18 allocation of 15 million. Based on the critical need for affordable housing in the county, we strongly recommend no decrease in funding. Here are three reasons why. First, leverage. Every AHIF dollar allocated from the fund is worth five times that amount for an affordable housing development. The reverse is also true. Every AHIF dollar lost means five dollars of potential investment lost. AHIF loans are almost always a critical piece of AHC's financing to make the preservation and construction of affordable homes possible. Second, economic health. Affordable housing contributes to the long-term economic health of a community. AHC's board chair, Justin Oliver, is a business owner and passionate believer that affordable housing helps maintain a competitive workforce. He says, businesses provide the jobs that fuel the economy and support our schools and other services. To retain and attract great companies, you need a high quality of life for their workforce, particularly housing affordability. That brings me to my third point and the one closest to my heart, family stability. At AHC, I have seen firsthand how housing contributes to the long-term success of a family. Stable families help create strong, vibrant communities. Here is one example, and I wish I had time to share many more, of an AHC resident whose stable housing is helping her give back. When I met Iris, she was three years old and didn't speak English. Her parents worked in local restaurants, and they lived at Virginia Gardens. Iris grew up in our resident services program and was the first in her family to go to college. She's now a preschool teacher in Arlington and is thrilled to be giving back to the community that helped raise her. Her family still lives at Virginia Gardens. To sum up, I'm proud to live, work, and raise my family in Arlington. I truly believe that housing diversity is critical to what makes Arlington a great place to live. Please fully fund AHIF so Arlington can live up to its vision and remain a diverse and inclusive world-class urban community. Speakers on the proposed fiscal year 2019 expenditures budget for the county. No, we do not. Thank you very much to all who came and testified and stayed with us. We appreciate your comments very much. I will now entertain a motion to conclude the public hearing on the proposed budget for county for fiscal year 2019 and carry over consideration to the April 21st county board meeting. So moved. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. We will conclude the public hearing on the proposed expenditures 
Uh, we do, however, have another hearing on the tax rates and fee proposals. Um, those are the proposals. I will not itemize them now. They were each advertised at our February 24th meeting, um, ranging from the bid taxes to the real estate tax rate um, to fees for parks and recreation, CPHD and others. The same speaking procedures will apply and uh, the fiscal year 2019 budget, including those tax rates and fees will be adopted as part of our April 21st county board meeting. For now, we are adjourned and thank you again. Thank you.